Hey everyone, welcome to Arthra Home Automation. Today we'll be installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. We're going to be using the Raspberry Pi 4, but you can use the Pi 5. Just a note, the Raspberry Pi 3 you can install Home Assistant on, but as of recent releases, it really does struggle, especially when adding Node Red. For me, Node Red is an essential component of Home Assistant. We'll go through each step to install the key add-ons you need. The add-ons we'll be adding is the file editor, Mosquito Broker, Node Red, Terminal SSH, Hacks, and Son of LAN. It is also essential that you use a good quality SD card. The cheaper cards seem to burn out very easily. So I would invest in a good SD card or SSD drive. Let's continue with the install process. All right. Let's continue setting up the Raspberry Pi for Home Assistant using the official Raspberry Pi Imager. First, head over to the Home Assistant website or the Raspberry Pi Foundation to download your Imager tool. I've linked the location in the description below. Once installed, open the tool and start by choosing your device. In this case, I'm selecting the Raspberry Pi 4. Next, choose the operating system, scroll down to other specific purposes and find Home Assistant and Home Automation. Select the version specifically made for the Raspberry Pi 4. This ensures full capability and smooth performance. Okay. I'm using a 32 gig SD card for this demo. That should be more enough to get started. Once you hit right, the image will do its thing. After that, remove the SD card, insert it into your Raspberry Pi, plug in the LAN cable and power it on. And don't worry, if the Pi doesn't start the first time, just threaten it with the reboot, works every time. All right, let's try Access Home Assistant for the first time. Open your browser and go to. If that works, perfect, you're in. But if it doesn't load, don't stress, some networks don't support .local addresses. In that case, we'll need to find the Raspberry Pi's IP address. There are a couple of easy ways to do this. Option one, use Advanced IP Scanner. Download and install Advanced IP Scanner and look for something like Home Assistant or Raspberry Pi in the list. Option two, use your Wi-Fi router. Log into your router's admin page. Find a list of connected devices or DHCP clients and locate the Raspberry Pi. It should be listed there with its IP. Once you have the IP address, Type it into your browser like this. Give it a bit of time. Home Assistant can take up to 20 minutes to fully start up on the first boot. When it's ready, you'll see a welcome screen. Click on Create My Smart Home to get started. Let's create our first account. I'm going to call mine Test Board, and for the username, I'll use Test Bot. Just remember, usernames must all be lowercase. Set a secure password. Confirm it, and make sure to remember these details. Seriously, if you forget your logon info, there's currently no recovery option. You'd have to start over. Let's set your location. I'm choosing Balterfried and Park, South Africa, as a general area, but you can be more precise if you like. Home Assistant will now ask you if you would like to help. Improve the platform by sharing some anonymous data. Feel free to leave those options off or turn them on, your call. Click Next, and it will begin scanning your network for compatible devices. You can set them up now, or skip them for later. I'm skipping for now. And just like that, you're on your Home Assistant dashboard, and ready to start automating your smart home. Now that we're inside Home Assistant dashboard, let's install one of the most useful tools, the File Editor add-on. This handy tool lets you edit YAML configuration files directly in your browser. On the left sidebar, click Settings, and click on Add-ons. At the bottom of the screen, hit Add-on Store. Once it loads, find the file editor, click on it. Now just hit Install. It'll take a minute or two. Once it's done, and toggle on, starts on Boot, and toggle on Show in Sidebar. And just like that, you'll see the file editor show up on the sidebar, ready to use. With the file editor installed, we can tweak configuration files 
and add custom integrations, all from this interface. All right, next up, let's install Mosquito MQTT Broker. This one's essential if you want to connect smart devices that use MQTT, like sensors, switches, or even smart lights. MQTT is basically how a lot of devices talk to Home Assistant. Let's get it set up. Go into add-ons again, click on the add-on store, find the Mosquito Broker, click on it, and then hit install. This might take a minute or two, so go grab a quick sip of coffee. Once installed, toggle the following options. Start on boot and watchdog. This one's optional, but I recommend it to keep things running smoothly. Now, when it comes to authentication, you have two options. You can use the Home Assistant username and password, or you can set a separate username and password just for MQTT. I recommend creating a dedicated user. It's more secure and easier to manage if something goes wrong. Once that's sorted, click Start to launch the broker. And that's it. Mosquito Broker is now set up and running. Ready to handle messages from all MQTT enabled devices. All right, next up, let's install the terminal and SSH add-on. This one's important because it's required for installing hacks, which we'll get to shortly. And trust me, you're going to want hacks. Quick heads up before we start, make sure the advanced mode is enabled in your Home Assistant profile. To do that, click on your profile picture at the bottom left, scroll down, and toggle on advanced mode. Got that on? Cool, now back to the install. Go to settings, click on add-ons, then open the add-on store. Search for terminal and SSH, then click install. Once installed, enable the following options. Start on boot and show in sidebar. After that, click start. And the terminal will appear right in your sidebar. You can now run shell commands directly from Home Assistant. And that's exactly what we'll be using in the next step to install hacks. Let's move on and install hacks for the Home Assistant Community Store. X gives you access to custom integrations, dashboards, themes, and front-end elements, all built by the awesome Home Assistant community. Let's install it. First, open Terminal from the sidebar. Now type or paste this command exactly as shown. Once it's done, go ahead and restart Home Assistant to finish the setup. After the restart, head over to Settings, click on Device and Services, then go to Add Integrations and search for Hacks. Home Assistant will give you an 8-digit code. You'll be prompted to log on to your GitHub account. Copy or enter that code into your GitHub authentication to continue. This is required to authorize access. Once that's linked, you'll see Hacks show up in your sidebar. From here, you can browse and install customer components, themes, automations, and even complete dashboards, all built and shared by the community. Hex is like an app store of Home Assistant. And now it's ready to go. Now let's move on to one of the most powerful add-ons you can install, Node-RED. Head back into the add-on store, search for Node-RED and click install. Node-RED is a visual automation editor. Unlike traditional Home Assistant automations written in YAML, Node-RED lets you drag and drop components and wire them together, no coding required. Before starting up, Scroll down and enable the options, start on boot and show in sidebar. Then switch to the configuration tab. If you don't have SSL setup, which is common in local and first time setups, go ahead and disable the SSL option, then click save. Then go back to the information page and click start. Node-RED will begin initializing. When you open Node-RED from the sidebar, you may see a gateway error pop up at first. That's normal. Just give it a minute. Sometimes it takes a bit of time to start up properly. If you still get the error after waiting, check the logs to see what might be causing the issue. Compared to Home Assistant built-in automations, Node-RED will give you more flexibility for building complex logic 
visually and interactively. We're using Node-RED extensively in future videos. Most of the automation, logic and experimentation will happen right here in Node-RED. All right, there's one more important step to wrap up, our Home Assistant setup. And that's installing the Sonoff LAN integration using Hacks. Since we're an official Sonoff distributor, most of the devices we'll be using throughout the series are Sonoff based. The Sonoff LAN integration lets us control many of the devices locally. Meaning even if the internet goes down, your smart device keeps running smoothly. Open Hacks from the sidebar, search for Sonoff LAN and download it. Once it's installed, go ahead and restart Home Assistant. Then head over to Settings, Devices and Services, Integrations, and add Sonoff LAN integration. Best practice to create a separate eRelink account just for Home Assistant. Then share your devices from your main account to this Home Assistant account. That's because eRelink only allows one active login per account. And if your phone and Home Assistant fight over it, Devices can go offline, so keeping them separated avoids that headache. With Sonoff LAN installed, you're ready to control most of your smart devices locally and reliably. That wraps up our essential Home Assistant setup. In the next video, we'll be putting these tools to work. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss what's coming. Just a big shout out to the Home Assistant team for building such an incredible platform. It's open source, flexible, and makes your home automation easier and more powerful than ever. This video sets up everything you'll need for the rest of the series. We'll be diving into automation simulations, like a smart geezer, energy management, and much more, all using Node-RED and Sonoff. So if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe, and click on the notification bell, so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.